The Edge at 11 starts now. James and Jennifer Crumbly reunited in a courtroom after years apart. Today, the parents of the Oxford High School shooter received their sentences for their roles in the massacre, ending another chapter in this horrifically tragic case. Please know that I am truly very sorry. Ethan Crumbly's father apologizing to the families of the four victims killed by his son in the Oxford High School mass shooting two and a half years ago. Justin Schilling, Tate Meir, Hannah St. Juliana, and Madison Baldwin lost their lives that day, and seven other people were injured in the attack. On Tuesday, James and Jennifer Crumbly were sentenced to 10 to 15 years in prison for giving their then 15-year-old son access to a gun and failing to stop him from carrying out the shooting. I've taken countless nights of lament over the anguish and shame I carry. Knowing what my son did. The Crumbly's remarks came after victims' family members delivered emotional impact statements condemning their role as parents. You failed as parents. The punish punishment that you face will never be enough. The Crumbly's were each found guilty of involuntary manslaughter in two separate trials earlier this year. Defense attorneys argued the couple could never have anticipated what their son would do, but prosecutors provided evidence the Crumbly's gave their son a gun and failed to secure it after he showed signs of mental health issues. These convictions are not about poor parenting. These convictions confirm repeated acts or lack of acts that could have halted an oncoming runaway train. Outside court, victims' families called the Crumbly sentence just, but also blasted them both for not showing enough accountability. Not once did they say, yes, I really wish I would have locked the gun up, regardless if it was the law at the time or not. The victims' families say the next step for them is holding the school accountable for what happened. And today was the first time James and Jennifer Crumbly were in the courtroom together in two and a half years. At the beginning of the case, James was seen mouthing, I love you, to his wife. Those who carefully watched this case noticed a shift in the courtroom today. Jennifer spotted giving her husband the evil eye as her husband appeared uninterested in making eye contact. Well, Monday's total solar eclipse made the small city of Luna Pier a tourist destination. People flocked from all over to witness a moment of eclipse totality. And it was arguably the biggest crowd to ever descend on the community. And as Fox News' Dave Spencer reports, the traffic it brought to the area was as rare as the eclipse. It was clear well before the moon passed in front of the sun. I knew it was going to be busy, but not like it was. That Monday was going to be different for those living even close to the path of totality. It was backed up from the state line all the way into Wayne County on I-75. Monroe County Sheriff Tony Goodenough says they had extra patrols in anticipation of the crowds coming south, but like the eclipse itself, what he experienced was a once-in-a-lifetime event. Between 10 a.m. and midnight, the sheriff's office alone handled 130 calls for service. Mostly involving crashes, 32 to be exact. Seven injury accidents, 13 disabled vehicles. Everyone trying to get somewhere at the same time. Drivers became impatient and, and just cut in front of cars, and I'm thinking I'm going to witness a crash. Here in Monroe County, traffic before and after the eclipse proved to be a problem. Some, like the state park, were more equipped to handle it than others. They even had a viewing party to capitalize on the influx of people flocking to the area. Vicki Lowry was there. We had a little bit of a wait getting in. And she definitely wasn't alone. Have you ever experienced anything like that? No. I've lived here my entire Entire life and I have never seen that much traffic in Monroe County ever. Those from Monroe County had an advantage as long as you didn't have anywhere else to be on Monday. We had the benefit of being like in our little subdivision so we didn't get no traffic. People parked we would never think of they'd be parked just to get out and witness this event. And even those local shortcuts were cut off hours before and after the eclipse. Main roads were really bad, but the side streets were even worse. Keeping deputies busy till 1130 at night. I'm talking roads out where if we see 15 cars a day, we're lucky. Yeah. Uh, and we had them backed up for miles. Thankfully, the sheriff says aside from more than his fair share of traffic crashes, there were no major crimes to report. In Monroe County, Dave Spencer on the Edge. You know, they got to 
experience it the way they wanted to and big business for Luna Pier. And they got to listen to a lot of books on tape on the way back or maybe their favorite podcast. <laughs> maybe. Or two or three of them. Well, we've had a wonderful start to this week. Temperatures in the 70s. It's been nice. It was incredible today, but things are slowly going to cool down. Captain Rich Luderman, I guess that's kind of like a, a reality check, right? It's April in Michigan. You right. know how that goes, Roop and Taryn. Uh, we did have great weather yesterday for the eclipse, and today was also very nice. Daytime highs in the middle 70s. Here's our next storm uh, building down over Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. Some of that energy is coming our way for Wednesday night, Thursday, and for Friday. Now, there is a very weak front that is passing east of us right now. You can see some showers around Dayton and Cincinnati, a few showers close to Toronto. But here's the real story today. 76 degrees, the official high at Metro Airport, even as far north as Traverse City, close to 70 degrees. How about Alpena? 74 degrees. There are the numbers at Metro Airport, 76 and 47, way above where we should be for April. April. Look at the record, 78 on the high side. Then again, 19. 19. Ooh, mama. That's pretty cold for April. Uh, right now, temperatures are falling off. 49 in Lansing, 58 in Ann Arbor, 57 Windsor up there in Mount Clemens. 60 degrees right now. But fair skies are going to be the story for the rest of tonight and for the first half of Wednesday. Earlier today, we had that breeze from the south and west. Now it's more west and northwesterly as that front works off to the east. It is cooler around Grand Rapids, 51. Green Bay, 49. Newberry up there in the UP, 45 degrees. Nothing crazy cold on the map. So watch Watch that one front fizzle out as it moves east, then a stronger system comes at us from the south. This is for Wednesday night, Thursday, and for Friday. We are not expecting severe weather, but there could be uh, better than an inch of rain in spots. It looks like the bullseye for heavy rain could very well be close to Battle Creek, up to two inches there. So keep that in mind. For the rest of tonight, just a bit cooler, but uh, quiet for the rest of the night, down to 45. Tomorrow, 65 degrees, so we'll be down about 10 with some late night showers coming in. That's Wednesday night into Thursday and Friday. It is going to be unsettled around here with some wet weather and some breezy weather, but the weekend shaping up nicely. How about a full check with Stephanie starting at 4 a.m. The best thing we want is to have the patient suffering and in pain and uh, dealing with a drug shortage. Prescription pain medication in short supply as pharmacies across the country. The drug hydrocodone, also known as Norco, going unfilled for some patients with chronic pain. This appears to be the result of recent lawsuits against major chains like CVS and Rite Aid following a nationwide crackdown on opioids. For those struggling to get their prescriptions filled at this time, experts recommend looking to Volterin Gel. It's sold over the counter and it works really well as an anti-inflammatory treatment. In Royal Oak, an update to a story we brought you at 10. The Planning Commission approved a plan for a new apartment building. Not everybody was happy about this. Many neighbors staunchly opposed, and they made their voices heard tonight. Fox News' Dave Kinchin at the meeting. At the corner of Rochester and Genesee near 14 Mile in Royal Oak, we're totally against it. Heck no is the word from many neighbors standing against a proposal to build an apartment complex on the side of this old bank. It would be a three and a half story building with 42 homes according to city records. Neighbors tell us the lot has been abandoned for at least a few years. It's just too big, it's too tall. 42 units we feel is too big for this property. The concerns do not end there. It's gonna increase a lot of traffic on our street. Uh, loitering comes with apartment complexes, and we're just all really worried about it. Just think about it. If you work at 12 Mile and John R. or DeQuinder anywhere, you're not going to go 14 and fight the lights. You're going to jump through the subdivision, and you're going to come right in here. We don't want the project. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Some of the same neighbors speaking with us made their voices heard at a Royal Oak Planning Commission meeting Tuesday night as city officials got a briefing with visuals from the proposed project's developers. Everybody here is telling you it's too big. There's no, there's no advantages to the community. A member of the development team says they've already been listening to neighbors and have made changes. We reduced the number of units from 48 to 42. We increased the parking from 66 to 79, which is about a 20% increase. While most who spoke out don't want the apartment complex, at least in its current draft, there were a few takers. This type of project, in my opinion, exemplifies the Royal Oak that we want for the future of our city. And we just got late word that this did pass the Planning Commission in a vote six to one in favor. It now goes to the City Council for a vote. Some of the members of City Council are also on the Planning Commission. In Royal Oak, Dave Kinchin on the Edge.